Be careful who you pray for. You just might be praying for the devil. I repeat that. Be careful who you pray for. You just might be praying for the devil. I was just on Instagram and there was a celebrity. Um, I forgot her name. She had a blue check next to her name. And she posted a meme of a young man standing next to a couple of what looks like Mercedes Benz. And some money or whatever. And she was saying that the young man was missing. The young man had the same first name that I had. I don't know the young man, never seen him before. Don't even really know uh, this person that was following me on Instagram and that I was following her. But I put a comment on her page and I said, how did he get my name? Because I have one of those names that you don't hear every day. I said, how did he get my name? And she responded and says, you should be praying for your brother. Now, he is not my brother. I don't know him. He's not my brother just because we share the same hue or skin complexion does not make him my brother. I have one biological brother. Anyone else I refer to as brother are my brothers in Christ. It's like Yeshua says, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? These are the ones that do the will of the father. Those are my mothers, my brother, my sisters. So I don't know the young man. So I responded back to her and I said, well, I don't know him. No, I had asked her if she knew him personally. And then I said, I don't know him. I don't know anything about his life, how he lived. I don't know anything about um, surrounding what happened, surrounding what happened before he ended up missing. I don't know any of that. So why would I pray for someone that I don't know? Now, there are so many zealous so-called Christians out there that will put the little praying hands in the chat. They will say, I'm praying. Um, and they would maybe recite a little prayer um, on the post. I personally don't do that. I don't pray for just anyone and everyone. I don't pray for the world. Because we're living in a world where people are openly blaspheming the most high. They're openly rejecting the most high. This young man could be a person that rejects the most high. Now, on that meme she posted, he was last seen coming out of a cannabis place or some type of cannabis shop. Again, I don't know anything about his life, how he lived, and what's surrounding him coming up missing. I don't know any of that. So why would I pray for this young man? Now, there's a scripture in the Bible. And I'm going to read that. It's taken from the book of James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse. This is referring to the people of Yah. This is not directed to the world. This is regarding the believers of Christ. The 16th verse says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. And then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you have people that capitalize and weaponize the people of Yah especially if they know you have a connection with the Most High. They will reject the Most High. They will speak evil of the Most High. They will speak evil of your Bible, Christianity, of Yeshua. And then the minute they're in trouble or someone they know is missing, the first thing they say is, pray for me. 
pray that we might find this person. Well, not long ago, you were calling upon Oshun. So why not call upon Oshun and have Oshun or your ancestors to find this person? The same person that you believe in, you put your faith and your trust in. Why would you come to a so-called Christian or someone that believes in the Most High and ask them to pray for you? That's capitalizing on their prayers because you know or you may feel that their prayer will reach, that will reach the Most High. Yes, you have people that believe your prayers will reach the Most High and they will use you for your prayer power. And you have to be careful not to just freely give up your prayer power. Again, do not be freely, don't be free to give up your prayer power, to be used for your prayer power. You praying for someone that you don't know. You're praying for someone that reject the most high. You're praying for someone that might end up breaking into your house one day. Or might end up doing something quite evil. See, there's a lot of so-called black people out here that's into the dark arts, that's into witchcraft and voodoo. And there are some blacks that even get caught up and those same spirits that they call upon turn on them and their families. And then they request prayer from the saints. They think because you have the same hue or you share the same skin tone, you're supposed to pray for them. The, the only time the people of Yah should pray for the world is when you're praying that they might be saved. That's the only prayer that so-called Christians or the people of Yah should be praying when it comes to the world. And you might have family members that may be included in the world. You know their lifestyle. You know they're out doing things they should not be doing. But yet you want to pray that they continue doing those things that they should not be doing. The 10th, the 10th chapter of Romans, reading from the first to the third verse, it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. See, that's the type of prayer that you should be praying for the world. In the second verse, it says, For I bear record, for I bear them record that they might have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves, have not submitted themselves, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. I'm going to read those three verses again. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves have not submitted themselves, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yah. So be careful who you pray for. You just don't give out prayer like welfare. God is not a welfare God. I repeat that God is not a welfare God. And you have demons out there. You have devils. People that live devilish lives every single day. People that support abortions. They support 
pedophilia. They support all types of unrighteousness. Will do devilish deeds 365 days a year and then end up in trouble or missing and then they come to you and request prayer. Or they will put someone else up to ask for prayer. And you praying for this person, not knowing this person, don't know their life, how they live, don't know the circumstances surrounding their problems, and you praying for that? Someone could be shot, for example, and you praying for their recovery. But you're not aware that the reason why they were shot was because they raped someone's child. And the parent or relative of that child decided to seek retribution out on them. So you praying for this rapist recovery. Think about that. So don't be so quick to pray for people. I rarely pray for, the only time I pray for someone is if it's in my heart to pray. If it's not in my heart to pray, I'm not going to pray. I don't care how many prayer requests I see on social media. I don't care how sad the story may appear to be. I'm not praying unless it's in my heart or unless I know the situation surrounding the problem. Other than that, I don't just give out prayers. I'm not the prayer welfare. So be careful who you pray for. Even the devil solicit prayers. You might be praying for a devil. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe. And support this channel until next time. I'm fearless.